Hi, welcome to the noise pack. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this Fluke 732 DC reference standard, which is supposed to be one of the best DC reference standards ever made. Now, there is a whole project that I want to do on this, where I upgrade the battery charging circuitry and do a crossover adjustment and replace all the old components, especially in the DC power supply portion of this. And there's some really nice instruction on XDEV and an EV block exactly on how to do this. But this particular unit has an unusual problem that I want to see if we can fix quickly. Now, a lot of these problems can be inside of the oven in this thing, and the oven is, is a mess to open especially because it's old and it's been around for a long time and potentially been running for a long time. Everything is brittle. All the shield and thermal shield and stuff is very brittle. So you don't want to get in there if you don't have to. I'll show you what the problem is and see if we can fix it. Now, as you can see, the unit does turn on and it does produce the 10 volt as expected from its main 10 volt output. There's no battery in this and the in-cal light is of course not on because the battery is already in discharge and there's no battery. So of course the charge light is not on. So the 10 volt is there and it looks good. Now, if I go to the 1.018 volt, you can see that one's there as well. Now the way the 1.018 and the 1 volt output are derived is through two voltage division in some precision resistors. And using that combination with some other voltage dividers, you can actually find out the exact voltage. That's a whole other story. We can talk about that in the next video. But if I go to the 1 volt output, I get absolutely nothing. Now how could that happen? Well, it is possible that of course the circuitry is damaged and all of that is inside the oven. But let's take a look at the schematic and see if we can shed some light of where else that problem could be. So here's a quick schematic of how these various voltages are derived from the 10 volt. So this is a 10 volt high output. And you can see that we have a whole bunch of resistor dividers. And in particular, we have this piggyback board that has been added to some versions of this instrument. I'm not sure if mine particularly has this one or not, but nonetheless, the 1 volt and the 1.8 volt are derived through these resistor dividers. Now, if you see absolutely nothing on the 1 volt, well, there's a couple of things that could have gone wrong. I mean, you could have lost, for example, this resistor up here. If you lose this resistor up here, then you will just basically see a zero volt across this terminal. But if you measure the resistance in here, you should still see the one kilo ohm resistor. So by measuring the resistance across different terminals, you can evaluate which component might have gone bad in this. Now the odds of, let's say, this resistor dying and this resistor dying at the same time are pretty low. Perhaps one of them could drift and one of them could be disconnected, but not both. So let's measure and see if you can conclude something. If I see nothing, no resistance from this to any of the terminals, I would suspect that this connection is severed rather than this board being bad. But I have a quick view of what this looks like if you were to try and open it, it would be something like this. And this material here gets really brittle over time because it sits so hot. So yeah, connecting and disconnecting this would be an absolute nightmare, but we will work on this portion in a separate video in the future. So let's measure some of these resistances. So from the one volt that doesn't work, no matter which terminal I go to, I never measure anything. So between the ground, between the 1.018 1 volt, between the 10 volt, absolutely nothing. So that means that multiple resistors would have to either have failed or the connection to the terminal post itself is actually severed, which would be the easiest thing to fix because that way we, don't, we may not even have to get inside of the oven. So that's the first place I'm going to try, removing the front panel rather than trying to open the oven completely. And just to show you, if I go on the 1 volt, I'm going to be able to measure resistance between the 1 volt and the 10 volt as to be expected. So having said all of that, let's take a front panel off and take a look. And what do you know? That's exactly what has happened. Here's the cable. This cable right here is supposed to be connected to this terminal. This is a very brittle connection. There is no plastic around that. And it just has enamel on top of it. So we're going to have to shave that enamel off and solder it back on. But yeah, that makes perfect sense why the connection was completely open. So let's fix it up and see if the 1 volt comes back. Here we go, I think it looks a lot better now. All right, everything's connected. How to gently close it all back up. All right, let's measure everything to make sure it works now. So the unit's been out for about 30 minutes or so, but it's gonna take a much longer time for it to properly stabilize. But this is just a rough measurement right now. I'm measuring two things at the same time. One is the thermistor, which is close to the oven. It's basically a temperature coupled to the oven, and it usually should rest around four to five kilo ohm. So as you can see, that unit hasn't really fully warmed up, and this is the same for the q 3458 as well. That unit has just recently been calibrated, and we are reading a little bit low, but it's not, not a problem, of course. You only care about the trend and the stability. So we can make a good measurement and put it on the box and then tra track it over time. But let's take a look at the 1.018 volt and the 1 volt, of course. And our 1.018 volt is also a little bit lower, of course, because it is derived from the 10 volt. This means that the resistor division is doing a good job in this case. Let's try now the final 1 volt. 
and the one volt is alive too. It is a little bit low here in this case, maybe lower than the other ones. I have to do a calculation to make sure, but there are adjustments in the front of the unit and typically you don't really want to touch them because you care about their trend over time, but nonetheless, we could think about adjusting it. And there you have it, just a very quick video. In case you have a similar problem with a unit like this, it is worthwhile to look behind the terminals before you start opening the oven because, again, it's a much more involved process. Now, I'll just leave this here for now. I have a bunch of other videos that I need to finish and work on, so I'll see you next time.